And joining us now on Amarillo's Town Square, we've got Tracy Tellman with the Texas Department of Transportation. Yes, how are you? Doing great. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me today. Well, thanks for coming back. I believe the last time you joined us was this time last year. I think it was. Yeah, we <laughs> talked about back to school tips last year, too. Yeah. yeah, and you know, it's always great to have that refresher because, you know, back to school is coming up in a week. So, you know, we've yeah, got to be ready I can't believe it's it. already time for school to start again. It just seems to come sooner and sooner. I don't know what that is. Summer goes too fast. I know. You blink and we're back to school. So Yeah, exactly. Well, I guess uh, let's just uh, get started with uh, some some of these great tips, especially, uh, I guess, let's uh, start off with uh, tips in school zones because, I mean, before yeah. you know it, they're going to be congested and crazy. Right, exactly. And the thing to remember when you're dropping your kids off is that school is already determined where the best place is for you to, to drop that kid mm-hmm. off. So you need to follow their guidance on that. They'll give you information about where children should be picked up, where children should be dropped off. So you want to make sure you're following that. They have a safe zone for kids. They want the children to get out of the vehicles in that safe zone. Right. So that's that's our first tip. Um, another is no cell phones in school zones against the law. You can't do it. Um, there's a big fine for that. Uh, it's not safe. So we want to be sure you are put your cell phone away. As well as in the city of Amarillo, you, know, you yep. have to be hands-free. <laughs> so, yeah, not in the school zone at all and hands-free everywhere else. Um, you want to make sure as you're approaching uh, bus stops or places where children gather that you're paying attention mm-hmm. to them because they can be unpredictable. They're excited about school starting. They can run out in the street. They can, you know, do things that are unpredictable. So you want to slow down, keep your eye on those kiddos, make sure, you know, you're not running into any of them because that could be a really bad Absolutely. for everybody. Um. So in the, also during this time of year, we have kids walking Absolutely. to school and biking to school. Um, and a couple of little tips there. Uh, bicycles are supposed to ride on the right side of the street. Okay. So you ride with traffic. Right. Bicycles are considered motor vehicles in the state of Texas. So you're required to stop at all stop signs. You're required to follow the rules just like a car is. If your child doesn't know how to do that, It'd be a good time to get out and refresh them. Remember, show them how, you know, show them how to make a turn, how to signal a turn. Make sure they realize how to, you know, cross the street safely. They should be walking their bike across the street. Uh, Pedestrians should Mm -hmm. walk against traffic. So we always say ride on the right, walk on the left. Um, Little kids should stay on the sidewalk. They should know how to cross the street properly. They should know, look left, look right, look left again. Um, Practice with them. Practice walking to school. The route they're going to take, you know, show them how to be safe. Now, Tracy, when it comes to uh, the bike safety and all that stuff, is there somewhere that you guys have that they can go to refresh themselves? Because, you know, sometimes as parents, when it comes to bike, we don't know like the signals and stuff like that. And we all need to remember that. Yeah, And you can look at our website. It's text.gov. We have all sorts of traffic safety tips there, Mm -hmm. messages, all sorts of information about all our campaigns, all sorts of information for kids, adults, everybody. Wonderful. Now, I, um, also, uh, school buses. You yes. know, people forget. People, I don't think, sometimes they're like, uh, why is that flashing red? And they still <laughs> like, hey, let's just go around the bus. No. Yeah, no, you can't do that. Um, if the school bus is flashing red lights, you must stop. The only exception to that is if you're on a divided highway and yeah. you're going the other direction. Now, I don't see that that happens a lot around here, that we have a school bus actually stopping on a divided highway. But it can yeah. So, but anytime you're on a city street, uh, you know, any street that a school bus is on, if they're stopped with their flashing lights and their stop panel out, you must stop. And that doesn't mean stop and then go again. Yeah. It means stop and stay there till the bus, uh, you know, t- turns off their lights. Now, when they're flashing yellow. When the school bus is flashing yes. yellow, they are signaling that they are about to stop or they're moving slowly. So, you know, use caution, just like you would around any other vehicle that's flashing yellow lights. Use caution. Yeah. But, of course, if it is red, I don't think you want the ticket you're going to get if you get yeah, caught. Yeah, I'm not sure what that fine is, but it's going to be hefty. <laughs> yeah. And plus the fact that, you know, again, little kids, are they're excited. They're, you know, they may dart out in front of traffic in front of that school bus. We don't want anything to happen to those little kiddos ready, you know, ready to go back to school. Yeah, especially the younger ones because, yeah, you never know <laughs> when they just phew, fly out there and sometimes you just can't stop quick enough. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, they're, yeah, they're excited. <laughs> school, <laughs> school is an exciting thing. So we want them to be safe. We want them to get there safely. We want them to get home safely every Absolutely. single day. Now, uh, you and I were talking before we, we started here uh, about uh, pedestrian safety and just yeah. in general. Let's let's yeah. touch base on that one. Okay. Well, it's always good to, um, when you're a pedestrian or runner, you know, whatever you're doing, whatever your mode of transportation is, if you're not in a vehicle, 
you want to be sure that you are visible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so that means bright colors, white, reflectors, all of those things. On a bicycle or as a pedestrian, you want to make sure people see you. It's important. You're very vulnerable. Right. Um, if you're out on the roadways, either biking, walking, even as a motorcyclist, you're more vulnerable than a car. So you want to be sure people see you. Um, that's the easiest thing to do right there. Uh, another tip is to be predictable. Uh, don't cross the street in the middle of the block. That's uh, what we call jaywalking. <laughs> Uh, not a good thing. You need to cross at crosswalks. If you're riding your bike, you need to be predictable. You need to stay in the lane. You need to signal your intentions. You don't need to be weaving all over the road. Uh, predictability is the best thing for you and the motorists yeah. that are around you. Now, as a motorist, if you're passing a bicyclist, you're required by law to give them at least three feet uh, to pass them. Um, six feet would be better because yeah. if you've ever been on a bicycle and you've been uh, passed by a large vehicle, you can tell... You know, you, you can tell it goes by you because it's, there's kind of a wind suck. Yeah. It drafts you, and it can knock you off your bicycle. So, you know, give those bicyclists, those pedestrians, a little extra space. Um, they have the right, the bicyclists have the right to take the lane. Uh, just because they're in front of you doesn't mean you have the, uh, you know, the right to run them down just because they're not going fast enough. They have a right to have the roadway just as much as you do. But just be smart about everything, no yeah, matter if you're on the bike. Needs to or... be smart. Exactly. Be smart. Be courteous. Be polite. Be predictable. Everybody needs to do that. Absolutely. So, you know, back to school. Those are some great, great tips. And uh, j again, just be smart. Yeah, be smart. That's right. That, you know, that's one of our uh, favorite campaigns is uh, be safe, drive smart. And it, it occurs, you know, it encompasses everything. Uh, wearing your seatbelt, not speeding, don't drink and drive. You know, those are the basic Absolutely. rules of the road. Um, you know, bring those in now. Use them just like you would any other time of the year. But just be extra cautious. Absolutely. So uh, with that said, uh, well, school's about to be in, which means here in probably a few more weeks, we're going to be celebrating Labor Day right, now. Right. What, what, what do you guys do around Labor Day? Yeah, well, um, the Texas Department of Transportation has actually uh, provided some grants to local uh -huh. law enforcement to provide some extra DWI patrols during the Labor Day Absolutely. weekend. So, you know, p folks need to be aware that the police departments are out there. Enforcement is out there. They're looking for drunk drivers. We don't want fatalities on that Labor Day weekend. So they're going to be doing extra, you know, patrols, extra time and uh, looking for drunk drivers. So the best thing for you as a motorist, don't drink and drive. Absolutely. If you feel like you're drinking and, you you know, you're too drunk to drive home, you can either stay where you are, ask a friend to come and get you or, you know, possibly, you know, just just be smart about it. Just yeah. Ask, at, get a designated driver way before the night begins, you know, follow through with that. And the designated driver is not the person who has drank the, la the least. <laughs> Absolutely. The designated driver is a particularly sober person, has not had any alcohol at all. That's a designated driver. Okay, so that's, <laughs> we want to be clear about that. It's not the least drunk person. It is a completely sober person. Yeah. person that's stuck with the water, the Coke, and the tea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whatever your drink is, as long as it doesn't have any alcohol in it, that's what that's what we want to drive. So, yes, just be, again, be smart when it comes to, you know, Labor Day weekend, because that's a fun weekend for everybody. It's our right. last chance and our last blast to right. enjoy the end of summer. And if you're going to be hosting a party, you know, plan ahead. If you feel like you have uh, friends that are coming over that may drink too much, ask for their keys when they come in the door. Don't let them drive home drunk. You know, you don't want that to happen to your friends. That could be devastating to that person, yourself, to anyone else that's out there on the road that that person could injure. Absolutely. Well, Tracy, thank you so much. This has been wonderful today, and you've given us some great tips, and uh, we're looking forward to a great school year and, of course, a yeah. safe and happy uh, Labor Day weekend as well. Yeah, me too. Thanks.